when you take a flight and you think about a plane that goes from Detroit to Los Angeles, that's what you care about. Pilot goes from Detroit to Los Angeles. Your bag goes from Detroit to Los Angeles. But that plane potentially started the day in Atlanta and then flew to Dallas and the pilot got off and a new pilot got on and she flew the plane to Detroit. All these pieces are interconnecting. If it's icy in Atlanta and that plane doesn't make it to Dallas, anywhere along this chain of events, things can go wrong. Can we better understand how weather affects parts of the system and how they affect other parts of the system. So it's not just, oh, it's snowing in Detroit, my flight's gonna be delayed. It's, it was raining and thunder in Atlanta three hours ago, and that is now starting to affect the flights out of Detroit. So what we're looking at is weather and flight data, and we get that from uh, government bodies, NOAA and BTS, and we have about 40 million weather records over the last 10 years and 70 million flight records over the last 10 years. And so we've combined those into one large database, and we're trying to gather insights by combining the two and seeing how the two relate to one another. We mapped the delay data for U.S. Airlines, and on the day that we looked at, there was a, a pretty severe snowstorm that rolled over Chicago in the morning and then moved out to the East Coast later in the afternoon. So from that you were able to see how delays move across the U.S. by airport and what the effects were on the system for that. If you're Delta Airlines, you have hubs in Detroit and Atlanta and Minneapolis and so the weather in Atlanta may have a big effect on Detroit. Um, if you're United, the pattern might be very different. So there's the layer of weather, there's the layer of just sheer geography, there's the layer of airline structure, and trying to understand how these things fit together so that the airlines can make more educated decisions. By the way, there are going to be more and more people flying, which means there's going to be more congestion, which means weather's going to have a bigger impact, because 10 years from now, the skies are just going to be that much more crowded, and so little disruptions can impact many, many, many more passengers. So I guess with our data, we're trying to quantify how these disruptions really affect airlines, but also more importantly, how they recover from them, how they can plan for different weather events um, in different seasons. Personally, I would try to take the first flight out and fly in the morning, especially when it's heavily uh, congested throughout the holiday season. I would definitely look for nonstop flights because chances are if you're connecting, you have more of a probability of being delayed due to bad weather. And lastly, don't yell at the gate agents. The airline's doing all they can to help you get to your destination on time and safely. Working with data about travel patterns, University of Michigan researchers are creating a new mathematical model that may help slow down the spread of an epidemic. When an epidemic happens, how you're going to...